In this animated tutorial, we'll be looking at analog circuit construction using the Circuit Logic Simulation Software Package offered by Logic Design. The analog circuit we'll be constructing is the basic voltage divider biased common emitter BJT amplifier. Part 1 of this tutorial series covers the component library, component selection, component placement, as well as saving your work. We'll begin by taking a brief look at the device library, which offers an extensive listing of the components available in Circuit Logics. To access the device library, we click on the Devices menu. From the Devices menu, we click on the Library option to bring up the Device Selection dialog box. The Device Selection dialog box allows the user to locate the desired component by selecting a major device class, a minor device class, specifying the desired device symbol, as well as the selection of a model or sub-circuit when applicable. The currently specified device is a 5-pin operational amplifier. The symbol for the device is shown on the right of the dialog box. This is a 5-pin symbol, so all models associated with this symbol appear in the model or sub-circuit selection area. If we select one of the 7-pin variations for the op-amp, a new 7-pin version of the symbol is displayed. In addition, new models that match the 7-pin configuration for this selection appear in the model sub-circuit selection area. If this was our desired component, we simply press SELECT to place an instance of it on the workspace. In addition to the device selection dialog box, the main device toolbar shown on the left side of the screen provides access to 92 of the most commonly used devices and components. Components are selected from this toolbar by left-clicking on the desired component with your mouse, and then moving the mouse cursor onto the work area and left-clicking again to place the component. We'll now look at how the grid options can be utilized in Circuit Logics to assist with accurate or symmetrical component placement while constructing circuits. The grid options can be accessed by bringing up the View menu. From the opened view menu, we select the drawing grid option to bring up the grid setup dialog box. This dialog box allows the user to define the desired horizontal and vertical spacings for the intended grid. Selecting the show grid option allows the grid to be displayed on the workspace. Selecting the snap to grid option ensures that pin 1 on any selected component will snap to a grid intersection on component placement. We can now click on the OK button to implement the desired grid options. Up till this point we've examined how to select a desired component and also how to place a single instance of it on the workspace. We're going to take a brief second to review how multiple instances of a selected component can be placed on the workspace. Reviewing our intended design, we can see that this circuit requires five resistors, two capacitors, and three ground connections. Circuit Logix provides us with an option that enables us to drop multiple instances of a single selected component. To access this option, go to the Options menu. To enable this feature, we click on the Repeat On item from the Options menu. Also note that this option can be toggled on and off by using the key combination of Control and R. We'll begin by selecting resistors to be placed in our circuit. With the resistor selected, we can click on the right mouse button to rotate the component orientation. We then click on the left mouse button to drop a single instance of the resistor in each of the five desired locations. Once all resistors have been placed, we, we click on the escape key to discontinue resistor placement. We can now move on to select and place the output and input coupling capacitors for this amplifier.
Next, we'll move on to place the three ground connections. We continue to populate our circuit by selecting the DC voltage source used to power this amplifier. We will also add an AC signal generator to provide stimulus to the amplifier circuit. The last item required to complete our circuit is an NPN BJT. It's important to note that we can also access the device selection dialog box by clicking on the parts icon located in the toolbar. We're looking for a BJT NPN transistor. Transistors will be located in the semiconductors major device class. We can now scroll through the available list of NPN transistor models and find the desired 2N3904 transistor that's suitable for our application. Once the desired model's been located, we can then click on the select button and proceed to place the transistor in our design. Now that we've completed the component placement stage of our design, we will go ahead and turn off the grid features for this design. We'll now take a moment and save our design in its current state. To do this, we bring up the File menu. From the File menu, we select the Save As option. This allows us to name and specify the location to which we wish to save our design. We then enter the desired file name and click the Save button to save the design. We've reached the end of Part 1 of our tutorials on analog circuit construction. In Part 2, we cover wiring the circuit, setting the component values and parameters, as well as circuit annotation. For more information on the Circuit Logic Simulation Package or any of the other simulation packages offered by Logic Design, contact us at the information shown here.